Listen Up is back examining the value of faith in democracy. And no matter where you look in or around the political scene, you'll find people who say their faith compels them to action in public affairs. So I just, as a someone who worked as a tax lawyer and someone who had worked as an economist briefly, I just felt it was a dumb way to raise money. It's the GST that David Kilgore is talking about, but during his time as an MP, battling the GST wasn't his only fight. Oh, no, Mr. Mulroney and I had plenty of differences other than the GST. Oh, you should have seen the list. <laughs> first elected in 1979, he was re-elected seven times, but he would be the first to tell you that his faith and values informed his work throughout his time in office. That same faith motivates him to continue to care for Canada's political process. Today as a fellow at Queen's University Centre for Study of Democracy and his work on human rights and international concern. Whether one's faith is, uh, is, uh, is Christianity or Islam or Judaism, anything, all people have faith. These are, these are the values that people operate with. People who have no faith, and that's, that's a a community too that has to be respected, uh, they have their values too. So all voters have values, whether they're spiritual or, or non-spiritual or just uh, common sense, I suppose, uh, will differ with every voter. You have said recently in a public speech that you believe we are governed by a good and patient, loving God. Mm -hmm. What does that God want from us? He wants us. Um, he wants us to do our best all the time. He wants us to, uh, as, as a Christian, I, if I'm not mistaken, the word poverty is mentioned 2,500 times in the Bible in the New Testament. He wants us to be more concerned about the uh, about the poor. Tell us about your faith journey. My father had lung cancer, and in the 50s in Winnipeg, I started going to prayer meetings at a at a uh, at a uh, professor, university professor's home, and his wife and. Uh, that deepened my faith uh, a lot. It's been a particularly uh, acrimonious season in the political life of Canada. Mm -hmm. Stressful. Yeah. I'm thinking to the many years that you ran the parliamentary prayer breakfast. What effect does your Christian faith have in just helping your inner person in this kind of environment? Well, I would argue that all of us have a faith hole in us, the, the old analogy of, of the hole in all of us, that we all need faith and, uh, and we need, uh, we need to, ha to have that in our, as part of our, major part of our being. Some people say it's all encompassing, but uh, at least for people in politics, if they don't have some anchor, if they don't have something they can say, look, this is not acceptable to, to my deepest religious views, then they're just like corks on the sea. They just bounce around and they look, they applaud. And I think that's what people are calling for in Canada is they want people to stand up for values. We all have to do more, and I'm sure that you do, we have to do more to make this world a better better place. It's We've got lots and lots of work to do, haven't we? Former Pastor Wes McLeod campaigned for office against David Kilgore. He ran a distant fourth in that 1988 election, but would go on to be a key aide to three MPs. Today, he meets monthly with other Christian believers working in Ottawa for prayer, encouragement, and support. So Wes, you've got 169 groups nationally across the country that are Christian, that are trying to affect the political culture in Canada? That's right, that I can identify. I'm sure there's more. Uh, but these are people that are uniting to either through advocacy or activism or through education or through prayer and ministry to people or in many other ways simply to be ambassadors of Jesus in the political realm. I get the impression that these individual lobby groups are all intent on helping the democratic process. Yeah. For sure, and they're not just uh, lobby groups that are advocating or being activists. They're educating people, they're praying for people, they're supporting people in their work, various ways of, of encouraging people. So that does help democracy for sure. If we believe democracy is the, the involvement of people 
uh, with their rights and responsibilities with each other in any given society, then anything we can do to encourage people to do more of that is, is good, and I believe that is happening. I want to now turn this a little bit personal, Wes, because you actually think God called you into political activism. Tell me about why you left the pastorate to do this kind of life. I think if one has any genuine interest in how your country is governed, there's that uh, latent or kind of a dormant interest that one has. And when you see how uh, you can help more people, I think that uh, then you see that politics is a genuine vocation. It's based on those principles, Lorna, that humility under the sovereignty of God, the value of every human being, the equal worth, that makes them much more than a citizen or a taxpayer or some kind of member of a voting bloc. They are humans of incredible worth, right? So wherever we can help each other in society, we should, we should do that. Politics is really important because it's the way we manage our collective affairs. And certain people have certain gifts to be involved in politics and they should leverage those gifts, develop, deploy them. But it's a calling, says this former MP. What you need is a few people, a few people being, being dedicated, being honest with themselves and honest with each other can make a huge difference in a place like this. And this is what really happens. To thrive in the pressures of Ottawa, Jack Murda is teaching the Christian discipline of contemplation. God talks to us when we're still, in the silence of our hearts, in the silence of our minds, in the silence of our bodies. And uh, we're in such a noisy world all the time. There's noise around us. So I think this is a way just to sit and give a few minutes a day to God in, in silence, uh, in quiet. And uh, it really does have a very positive impact. It doesn't take long, maybe 10 minutes, 12 minutes. But, but give yourself some time so that if God wants to speak to you, if God wants to be part of you, God can do. God lives in our hearts. But if our hearts are busy because we're so busy, it, God's not going to have a lot of chance to, to touch us and to, um, to give us that kind, of, uh, that, that kind of sense of purpose that uh, is needed. When I return, I'll share my thoughts on the value faith brings to democracy next.